Combustion is found everywhere in your everyday life, and it's the process that allows your car's engine to run and power plants to create heat and electricity for your homes. So it's a very simple process. You just need any sort of fuel. It could be a hydrocarbon, it could be wood, it could be a fossil fuel, and the process of burning requires oxygen. And the three byproducts are always steam, carbon dioxide, and heat. Let's go over some rules real quickly on balancing equations that involve combustion. So you know that it's combustion as soon as you see any sort of fuel added to oxygen and the products are always CO2 and H2O, carbon dioxide and water. That's how you know it's combustion. And once you classify the reaction and you can identify that, you can just follow these three steps. So first, balance the carbons and hydrogens first then you balance the oxygen and you might have to use a decimal if necessary and I'll demonstrate that and if you have to you might want to multiply the entire equation by 2 to get the decimal to change into a whole number. Alright so I have the rules right above the video right there so we know that it's combustion because again it's a hydrocarbon plus oxygen and the products are CO2 and H2O. So we're just gonna follow the steps so step 1 is balance the carbons and hydrogens first but before we do that, let's get a count on each side. So I think this is easy by now for most people. Okay, And on the right side, we've got one carbon. There are two plus the one. So that means in total three oxygens. But actually counting the oxygens don't really matter at this point. Because you balance them last anyways. And then uh, hydrogens will be two. Because it's an H2O. Okay, Now we're going to balance the carbon first. Put a 2 in front, so again it's called forcing, a 2 is forced. That will actually change your oxygen and we're going to come back to this in just a moment. But We're going to go ahead and balance the hydrogens by forcing a 6, place a 3 in front, and remember that 3 also distributes to everything in that formula. So our oxygen count is 4 plus 3 so in total that makes seven. So we're gonna come back to the left side here and we're gonna ask ourselves, what times two would give us seven? And you're allowed to use a decimal. And that decimal will be 3.5 because 3.5 times two will give me seven. Okay, so technically at this point, everything is balanced. The count is one, 3.5, two, and three. I'm gonna go ahead and erase some of this stuff just to clean it up a bit but because we use the decimal we have to multiply the entire equation by 2 so that we get it back to a whole number so that means our coefficients now look like this so it's a 2, 7, 4 and a 6 when you add these coefficients up we get a sum of 19 Okay, which is normal for combustion reactions okay it's not unusual to get sums that are like 63 or 71 or something so that's normal for combustion problems so this one has a different hydrocarbon it's C6H14 so carbons and hydrogens and oxygens again it's easy to count at this point let's count them up on the right hand side of the arrow so we've got one carbon we've got two hydrogens and we've got three oxygens so let's follow the three steps. Balance the C's and H's first. So we are going to have to force a 6 to come out. And to balance the hydrogens, we're going to need 14 by placing a 7. So it's 7 times 2. Okay. So count up our oxygens now. So this is 6 times 2 plus 7 times 1. So that is 12 plus the 7. So we've got 19 oxygens that we need to match up with on the left hand side. So now we bounce back over to the left and we ask ourselves what times 2 could possibly give us 19? And the only number that can do that is 9.5. 9.5 times 2 will give me 19 oxygens. Let's go ahead and erase that, get out the way, and we're going to go ahead and multiply the entire equation by 2 because we were forced to use a decimal which is not a problem okay so now you just double every coefficient so the coefficient there is 2 times 1 
Okay, plus 2 times 9.5. Arrow sign, 2 times 6 will give you 12, and 2 times 7 will give you 14. Okay, now add up all the coefficients, 2, 19, 12, and 14, and we are left with a sum of 47. This one is different because we're now burning alcohol. So it's got C's, H's, and O's in that first fuel. Okay, and counting them up, again, is not difficult. So we'll just do this real quickly. On the left, it's one, four, and three, respectively. On the right-hand side, I see one carbon, I see two H's, and I see a total of three oxygens. Okay, so just like before, okay, balance the carbons and hydrogens first. The carbons look okay, just leave a one there so that when we add up the sum of the coefficients, we're ready. And we're gonna force a four to come out by placing a two in front of the hydrogen. Okay, now we're gonna count up our oxygens. So this is one times two plus two times one. So we've got four oxygens on the right-hand side. And remember, this methanol, this compound already has one oxygen in it. So ask yourself, one plus what number would give me four? and it would be a three. Now you ask yourself what times two would give me three and that answer is 1.5. Okay so technically at this point everything is balanced. Okay our carbons, hydrogens, and oxygens match up and we're gonna multiply both sides by two. Multiply all the coefficients out. Okay double each one of the coefficients. You can think of it that way. Add up your coefficients, 2 plus 3 plus 2 plus 4 will give you 11 for this one. So it's a sum of 11. Alright, let's try one more. So I believe this is ethanol, so C2H5OH. Okay, it's actually six hydrogens. It's written kind of weird, okay, because you haven't taken organic chemistry yet, so um, there's a reason why it's written as OH. But again, count them up, count them up. On the right-hand side, we've got one, two, and it looks like three total oxygens. Okay, let's get to balancing. Balance the C's and H's first, so we know that a two is forced. And then for hydrogen, you need to place a three in the front. Now you're gonna count up your oxygens. We've got four plus three, giving us a total of seven. So it's not like for every combustion problem you need to use a decimal because you're going to see here how the numbers work out. So there's already one oxygen sitting there. So one plus what number would give you seven? So that is six. So what times two would give you six? So obviously it's three. So I didn't have to use a decimal in front of this oxygen this time. So our coefficients are already whole numbers. So you can just add them up and find the sum. So this is one plus 3, plus 2, plus 3, giving us a sum of 9 for this combustion problem.